Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah Santinetti and Rafina Antonetti. And we're here to do one thing, and that is to come talk on. straight about the Bible. Hey, the B I B L E, it is the book for me. Yes, amen. And amen. that's why we talk about the Bible, because it is the book that gives us life in our souls, life. In the spirit, that is, after we're born again, hello, <laughs> you need to be born again. Got to put Jesus first on that because it doesn't work. Well, we've been studying on Proverbs and we're still here in chapter 7 and we're going to be finishing this soon and we're going to move on to other things and then we're going to come back to Proverbs again. <laughs> I think we're going to be on Proverbs for a while, but let me ask you a question. Do you see just how beautiful the knowledge of God is and the wisdom of God. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God is what gives us life. Understanding that knowledge and that wisdom is a whole different issue. Amen. And so now we're going to dive in to the scriptures. And we've been talking about, and actually Solomon's been talking about it for a while. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm impressed on how many chapters he's devoted to the spirit of prostitution. Amen. And I even mean, in Ecclesiastics, he makes mention of that as well. Wow. I, you know, I, I think it's because of his lifestyle. <laughs> he had enough women around him. That's he had for sure. enough lifestyles <laughs> around there. We call them lifestyles. And you know what's interesting also is that we have to be careful that we do not become engulfed in the things that do not please God. Did you hear that? And the things that do not please God. Well, my wife is going to read and we're going to move on. And thank you for stopping by Talk Straight Bible. Amen. And so today we are on Proverbs, ch chapter 7 of Proverbs. And this is part 13. Hmm. And we're going to be reading from 7, 10 to 12. And the title of this message is The Temperate. Tem tem Temptress, <laughs> and there a woman met him, dressed as a prostitute and sly and cunning of heart. She was boisterous and rebellious. She would not stay at home. At times she was in the streets, at times in the marketplaces, lurking and setting her ambush at every corner. So... First, the first question, what is a temptress? Well, she was sly to slay. Amen. <laughs> a woman who tempts someone to do something, typically a sexually attractive woman who sets out to allure and, and to or seduce someone. So what do we call a male temptress? <laughs> he's, a, he's a prostitute. He's a seducer. <laughs> he's a prostitute. <laughs> he's also. a charmer. He's a debaucher. Ooh. The biblical meaning of a temptress stands as a type of enticement of any unlawful desire burning in the mind as that desire seeking fulfillment. And we see from his own life that Solomon vividly provides an example of temptation that requires wisdom to face and overcome. He describes a woman whose heart is snares and nets and whose hands are fitters and, and, and even though he says this in Ecclesiastes 7.26, it seems like he's writing about this very woman here in the Proverbs 7, mm. 1 through 27. And that temptress appears on the scene, as we, as we know in, in, in verse 10. And she comes out of her house and she comes to meet this young man that is walking in the dark of the night. There is no doubt about what she wants and, and shows by the way she is dressed. Very, very careful the way that we dress as women of God. She is dressed as a harlot, and the young man knows who is before him. Isn't that amazing? That he no, he's not he's not oblivious to who she is. But is he taking into account that this woman is married and she's playing her husband wrong? Okay, that's the first thing right off the bat. Mm -hmm. She's married and she's playing her husband wrong. She's a devious, sly woman. The Bible says she's a cunning of heart. 
and she is profoundly insinc insincere and she pretends to have some feelings for this young man this woman is full of restlessness she's loud she's excited and obviously she is rebellious concerning god's intention about marriage she can't stay at home she's rushed by her impure desires into the street and this woman goes looking to whom she can devour with her lust does that remind us of anything well it should because in proverbs in, in, in first peter 5 8 it says be sober be alert and cautious at all times that enemy of yours the devil curse him prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour but the first part of that scripture says be sober be alert be cautious this young man is not sober he's not alert or cautious he is drunk with desire Dude. for this married oh, woman oh, that oh, yeah. has approached him oh yeah and he's either unaware of how much damage can be done to him or uncaring of the consequences he only sees what's in front of him and he de desires it no matter what the cost that's amazing right sometimes maybe sometimes in our lives we have fallen into this situation or have been confronted with a situation similar to this young man what a prostitute comes before me no not that a prostitute has approached us because the chances are if we see the enemy face to face in the flesh we're either going to run or we're going to fight but that we have been unwise and undiscerning mm. regarding situations in our lives and that which has been offered it looks good it smells good and appears to be everything we want but yet it's not god how can we know for sure because we see from these verses of scripture that solomon says this man was walking in darkness mm. and heading in a direction that he should not have been going and he lacked sense was someone pushing him in that direction no he should have known better but chose to do evil well you know as we were uh, talking about that, um, a lot of things came to mind, especially why this world system is fallen. That's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. understand. Because of perversity. And, you know, that word is big here on Talk Straight Bible because we've learned some things about our own perversities. Mm -hmm. And if a person says, well, I have no perversities, then you're not alive. You're dead. Well, then, dead in sin, right? Now, you know, it's interesting, the two or the three verses of Scripture that my wife read, I'm going to give you the picture of these three verses mm -hmm. in one shot. Mm -hmm. It represents a house, now think about this, a house uh -uh. that is redeemed. But think about this, a house that is redeemed. And the second verse, that's verse 10. Verse 11 represents redemption or something that has been complete in the head think about that all right the third one is instru an instructor who gives instruction of course through his mouth so watch this now what is the bible teaching us here be careful and where you're walking into because you're just not walking into a place an edifice you're walking into a person's life who sacrifices mm. either Christ or the enemy. Mm. There's only two things in this world that we can depend on. And that's God and his word. Thank you, Lord. That's God and his word. Now, the prostitute, she made her appearance. You know, she was dressed to kill in Hollywood style. <laughs> I, you know, sometimes I look at the stuff that's out there and I go, man, are we living in days that are so captivated with new age? Mm -hmm. Captivated, you know? And so she had her powder on, her paint, you know, and perfume. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Uh, but if we put it on for the wrong reasons, then that's a whole different issue. Yes. So I want to talk about very quickly why there's only two things that we can go by in this world. I said God, the word, but then there is the right image and the wrong image. There are two images in the world, the image of God 
and the image of God. And you say, wait a minute, what? Well, the first God is the big G. Mm -hmm. The second God is the little G. <laughs> the first God owns the earth and the universe. He is the king of it. He is the sovereign. The second little God, which is the enemy, Satan, curse him. He has blinded the minds of unbelievers yes. so that they cannot see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So watch this now. There are two things, two things. Remember, God said that let us make man in our image after the after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now, think about the things that are creeping on the earth. Think about all the beasts of the field. God says that he made man to rule over these things. So if you're not ruling according to the image of God, something is ruling you according to that image. Mm. Yeah. So there's only two things in this world we can live by. Either righteousness or unrighteousness. There is no middle ground. Mm -hmm. As someone said, there is no demilitarized zone. You can't stand in the middle. It doesn't work. There is no middle ground. You, you From the light is into the darkness in between that. Mm -hmm. Light and darkness. Jesus said, whoever follows me shall not walk in the darkness of this world, but have the light of life. So God created man. I, I realized this a long time ago when I, when I read the original Hebrew text of creating man in our image is that God made us in the image of his attributes, you know, love, justice, righteousness, all these beautiful things is the image of God. So if we're not living according to that image, we're not being worked according to that image. God said, let us make man to work him in that image. When man fell, he received the knowledge of two images. Mm -hmm. Because he said, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Of all the other trees in the garden, you, you can eat. Mm -hmm. But of this tree, don't, don't eat of it because in the day you do, you will die. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Adam did not die that day, nor did his wife die that day when they ate of the fruit that is forbidden. But what God was telling him was this. Since a thousand years is like a day to God, he was saying, if you eat from this tree, you won't even live to be one day. You know that, that Adam died at 930 years old. He never reached a thousand years. Mm -hmm. The man that lived the longest was Medusala. He lived 969 years. He did not reach a thousand years. But the Bible tells us that the day of the Lord is coming where there will be endless endless life for us because we're going to be with christ but here we can't even live a day because we're following an image that is false mm -hmm. an image that is sinful now i want to share some other things with you we cannot understand truth without the image of god god made man in his image so that we can work in the concepts and the precepts of his word did you hear that Without the concept of the image of God, we cannot understand the way of righteousness. We cannot understand anything because we're following an image mm -hmm. that is dark. Wow. Understand that image stands at the highest point. Listen to this now. The image of God stands at the highest point of the universe. You say, how is that? Because God created the universe and he put the sense of, of something much higher in us when he created us in his image. Hmm. Did you understand that? But without the concept, we can't understand it. The depth of the image is the concept of the highest point, and that is the teachings of God. How come man is always looking up to the universe? There's something about the universe, yeah, Rafina, that's true. that man wants to know. That's true. It's because it is natural in us to want to know the higher points of life. Even unbelievers, when something happens, they look up. They look up, <laughs> you know. And, you know, when, when I talk to an atheist and especially they say, well, you know, I don't believe in God. I said, then do me a favor. Stop breathing his air. I said, now you want to prove to me there's no God? 
do this. I want you to hold your breath for 24 hours. And if you can make it, That's right. then God did not create you. There is no God. However, the Bible tells us in Job that it is the spirit of God that gives breath and life. Mm -hmm. So that means if you can live without a breath, you're not a creation. And the Bible also tells us a fool. A fool says there in his heart, heart, there is no there God. Is so the depth of the image of concept is those things which stands at the highest point. Next, I like what Charles Spurgeon said, by the way. He said that the Christians on their knees can see more than the philosopher on their tiptoes. <laughs> so we should live on our knees. The obscurity of the soul, the dark part, is that this young man was walking around and he was moved by an image that he saw, mm. and that was the woman. Mm. Just like a man, he is moved by things that he sees. A woman, she is moved by things that we see. That's just who we are. Hearing and seeing is a powerful gift that God has given us. When they came to Mount Sinai, they saw the mountain, they saw the fire, they heard the thunder, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they heard, and they became afraid because they did not understand it. But this young man moved away from the concept of that which is naturally written in him. Listen to what I'm saying. He moved away from the concept that was naturally given to him by the knowledge of the scriptures and his mind became dark and he began to relate to earthly things rather than to the creator wow. of the universe wow. Oh, wow. the great witness was before him as it is before us the universe is there listen to remind us just how great and awesome the power of god is in every star every planet every solar system, the galaxies, even the meteorites. Nothing can move without the will of God. Now, I want to talk about the image in the mirror very quickly. When we look at the image in the mirror, James talked about the image in the mirror. He said, when a man or woman looks into the mirror, they see the image. And they see everything that is in. Come on now, you look at the you look at your face in the mirror, and you go, "Wow, where did this spot come from? I got a pimple. I got this. I got that. I got." But as soon as a person walks away, and they get, watch this, they get distracted by the things of his life. They're not thinking about anything on their face. And James said that we must continually look into the mirror of liberty, which is the Word of God in Christ. So the concept of image can be clearly seen in the word of God. It tells us, let us make man in our image. So watch this. When you touch a mirror, you are not touching the reality of that which is in the mirror. You're just touching an image. When you touch the person or the thing that's in front of the mirror, you're touching substance. And this morning, the Lord impressed upon my heart. To say that if we are walking in darkness, we are touching nothing. Mm. There is no substance in sin. There is no life in sin. But if we're touching the reality of the person of God, we are touching the creator. He is teaching us how to reflect him, to be the opposite of the lie and walk in the truth. Amen. So, this is what I say to you. Do not touch empty spaces. It's empty. Está vacío. There's nothing there. To walk outside of God's will is to touch empty space that has no substance, no life, no salvation, no wisdom. To walk in righteousness is to stay away from the lifeless things of this world and grasp you, the substance and reality of God. That young man was walking after an image that was a lie. He saw it, it entered into his mind, and he found himself running after a lie. Mm. Running after a lie. So I say to you this morning, we say to you, Amen. Until we meet again. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom.